Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. And if you're a new viewer, welcome to Pie in the Sky Tours. My channel aims to bring you quality setups, tutorials, tips, guides and tours from Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. So do check out my other videos too. And please do like and subscribe if you enjoy the content as it helps boost the channel to more people. In today's video, we're taking a first look at an exciting update coming to the OpenXR Toolkit in the next few days, which features a range of updates and improvements. This really does help to boost that VR performance a bit further in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and it's designed to work with SIM Update 10, so let's check it out. I think it makes most sense just to go through the updated features. So as you can see, support for iRacing, Unreal Engine, Unity, War Thunder, and F1 2022 has now been introduced, as well as support for X-Plane 11 and X-Plane 12. But this is only in conjunction with OpenXR, VK, D3, D12 on supported devices, for example, Windows Mixed Reality, and no foveated rendering. The OpenXR Toolkit has been updated, so no more crashes with DX12 or Microsoft Flight Simulator using SimUpdate 10. The iTrack foveated rendering has also been fixed for SimUpdate 10. The Windows Mixed Reality motion reprojection on offsetting and its problems with sticking has been fixed. The invisible menu issue with DX12 and Vario has also been fixed. Incompatibility between eye tracking and controller hand tracking on Vario as well as hand tracking with Pimax XR have both been fixed. A few other technical details have been updated, such as using the RGB color correction, which is not applied when post-processing is off. Hand tracking in DCS, upside down image issues with certain open composite games, and support for fixed foveated rendering in Assetto Corsa Competizione. A new tutorial menu for first time use will help debugging issues with users not able to bring up the menu. And an option to alter filtering policy with foveated rendering is now been introduced. Writing FPS frame times to SCV files under the local app data has received support, as well as some other frame rate and VRAM statistics in the overlay. A legacy menu mode that reverts the menu to pre 1.1.2 for people who are not able to bring up the menu or having performance issues with the menu. There's been a visual warning added to the menu when HAGS is turned on, which is really useful. And an option has been added to disable the hidden areas in the mesh, as well as an option to add a left or right blind eye option in supported titles only. And the Pimax WFOV hack has been removed. And finally, safe mode has been made even safer. As you can see, this newest build has got a lot of updates. I'd say the biggest update is probably the fact that you can use it with more games now, but it's great to know that it's ready to use with some update 10. As you can see, the new tool really does boost the performance in VR. I've noticed an increase in frames and I'm having an even smoother experience. And please remember to like, subscribe and share this video if you find it useful, as it may help other simmers too. Thanks for watching, and as always, take care and stay safe.